In video 75 of Tensor Calculus, we'll use one of the formulas we derived in the previous video to evaluate the curvature tensor for each of our sample surfaces. In the previous video, we determined that this relationship right here was the best one to use to evaluate our curvature tensor. It's made up of two components here. We've got our shift tensor, and then here we have all the possible partial derivatives of our normal with respect to our surface coordinates. So we'll begin with the cylindrical surface and to prepare for that I have copied the shift tensor right here and I've copied the normal right over here. Well, the first thing we need to do is to evaluate all the possible partial derivatives right here with respect to our surface coordinates. Okay, so we'll just walk our way through this. Um, we'll take each of the components of our normal and find the partial derivative first of all with respect to theta and then secondly with respect to z. Alright, so with respect to theta the partial derivative of this is simply the negative sine of theta and then the that's the partial of the first element of n1 well n2 is sine theta so the partial derivative of that with respect to theta is cosine theta and our third uh, component here is zero so the uh, partial of zero with respect to theta is of course just zero and now we do the same thing we go through each of those components finding the partial derivative with respect to s2 which is z and in the case of the cylindrical surface none of these components depend upon z so all of these partial derivatives down here are equal to zero Okay, so we have succeeded now in uh, establishing each one of the elements of this, uh, this guy right here. So here we have this set of components, and here we have this one, and that makes up these two um, elements. So the next thing to do is to combine them with a contraction, and we're contracting on the I index, which means we're going to contract... Uh, each row here with each column here. So that's what we need to do next. So because we are contracting a 2 by 3 matrix with a 3 by 2 matrix, then uh, each element is going to be a product of 3 rows and 3 columns. And uh, the end result is going to have uh, 2 rows and 2 columns. So this is going to be a 2 by 2 matrix over here. Okay, so let's just do it. We're going to use this row and this column. So we're first of all going to multiply negative sine theta times negative a sine theta. That's going to be a sine squared theta. And then it's this element times this one. And that's going to be a cosine squared theta. And then it's this element times this one, which of course is just zero. All right, so now if we combine these together, you've seen this kind of thing before, we can factor out the a factor, and we'll have sine squared plus cosine squared added together. So the result of this is just a. And there's one final thing, and that is that our formula up here has a negative sign. So that means that our first element is going to be negative a and that's the way we go about it okay so next element is going to be um, this row right here times this column this one times 0 plus this one times 0 plus 0 times 1 is all 0 so that means this is a 0 okay now we're going to have uh, this row times this column, well, 0 times this plus 0 times this plus 0 times this is 0. So that means this is a 0. And finally, we have this row times this column. 0 times each element one at a time is going to be 0. So that completes the result right here. So that's the way you find the curvature tensor, and this is the result 
for the cylindrical surface. All right, let's move on and take a look at the spherical surface. For the spherical surface, uh, this is the shift tensor, and this is the normal. So first step again is to evaluate each of these elements to uh, fill out this matrix right here. Well, for um, the sake of time, I've already done that. I'll just show you what it is. Here you'll see that each of these items in this first row are the partial derivatives with respect to theta of each of these elements one by one. All right, and likewise, these three guys down here are the partial derivatives of n1, n2, and n3 with respect to phi. So that's uh, what we need here. So all that's left now is to form this contraction of uh, these rows and these columns. So let's do it. We're going to multiply this row by the elements in this column. So we start with a times cosine squared theta, and we'll have cosine squared phi. And the second term will be this guy times this, which is a cosine squared theta, this time with sine squared phi. And the last term, this one by this one, it'll be a positive term, a sine squared theta. Okay, now if you look at these two guys together, you'll see they have a common factor of a cosine squared theta. And this is cosine squared phi, and this is sine squared phi. So if we factor out the common factor, we're left with an identity that's equal to 1. So uh, you've seen this many times. Therefore, these two together equate simply to a cosine squared theta. And then if we combine this term with this term, we have the same effect. Factor out the a, and what's left is equal to 1. So all of this is just equal to a. And of course, we have to remember that it's a negative. So our first result right here is simply negative a. All right, um, this element here, the first row, second column, is going to be the sum of products of this row and this column. So we're going to have negative a sine theta cosine theta and then we'll have sine th phi and cosine phi and then uh, this guy times the second one is going to be a positive a and it's also going to have sine theta cosine theta and it's going to have sine phi and cosine phi and then this guy times zero means it's zero obviously these terms are identical so the result is equal to zero so it's that simple this guy right here is going to be a zero okay um, the first column second row is going to be the sum of products of the second row and the first column well, um, actually, I think we can do this one by inspection. If you look at it, this times this will be a negative term, while this times this is positive. But other than that, they're identical. This will have factors of a sine theta, cosine theta, sine phi, cosine phi, and this second product will as well. a sine theta, cosine theta, sine phi, cosine phi, and of course, this times this is zero. So we're going to have two terms here that add to zero, same as it did before. So this uh, second row, first column, is also a zero right here. All right, and finally, um, we've got um, the second row, second column will be sum of products of these elements with those elements. So we're going to have this times this, which is a positive term. It's going to be a sine squared theta, and we're going to have sine squared phi as well. And then this guy times this one is going to be a positive term, 
a sine squared theta again, but this time cosine squared phi. Well, uh, surely you see it here. This, this is a common factor. What's left is an identity that's equal to 1. So together, these two terms add to a sine squared theta. And again, we apply the negative sign, and uh, the result here is negative a sine squared theta. And with that, we're done. These are the results for the spherical surface. Okay, and finally, we'll move on to the torus. For the torus, this is our shift tensor. This is the normal. And as before, we start by filling out the six elements in this matrix. And again, to save time, I've already done that. Well, this is what we'll get. You can easily confirm that each of these three elements are the partial derivatives with respect to theta of n1, n2, and n3. And likewise, these are the partial derivatives with respect to phi of n1, n2, and n3. Okay, so um, next we'll just perform the contraction. So for the first element right here, we're going to have the products of row 1 and column 1. So two negatives, we'll have a positive term. We'll have this parenthetical expression to start with. And then we've got, uh, looks like, sine squared theta and a factor of cosine phi. All right, uh, this guy times this one, positive, a parenthetical expression. This time we've got cosine squared theta and cosine phi. Okay, we have common factors. This and this are common to both terms. We factor out the common factors. It leaves us with sine squared plus cosine squared, which equals 1, of course. Therefore, these two together will simply equal this. And, of course, we have to apply our negative sign. And that means that uh, element 1, 1 is negative times this uh, parenthetical expression of A plus B cosine phi times cosine of phi. And that's what we have for element 1, 1. Okay, second one will be the product of these guys times the second column over here. So um, first one is going to be a positive B times sine theta, cosine theta, sine phi, cosine phi. And the second term here and here will be a negative B sine theta, cosine theta, sine phi, cosine phi. And the third element will be 0. And you can easily see that these terms are equal but opposite, so they will add to 0. And that's the result they're looking for. Uh, row 1, column 2 is simply 0. Okay, um, row 2, column 1 will be row 2, column 1. We start off with a positive term here. We'll have our parentheses, then sine theta cosine theta, sine phi. Then the second term here is going to be negative, the parenthetical expression, times the sine theta, cosine theta, sine phi. And 0 times this is 0. Again, we have two equal and opposite terms, adding to 0. And that gives us a 0 in row 2, column 1. 
Now, um, just to make a quick note here, we could have saved ourselves some time because uh, we know that our result, the curvature tensor, is going to be symmetric. So this element here will always be equal to this one. So if you trust that, then once you've calculated item 1, 2, you know it's going to be the same as 2, 1. So when you're doing this in the future, you can save the time to just write this in as is. Okay, and finally, uh, we're going to have row 2 and column 2. So what have we got? We've got a positive term, positive b, and we'll have cosine squared theta and sine squared phi. And then this term will be positive b, sine squared theta and sine squared phi. And cosine phi times this is going to be plus b cosine squared phi. Okay, looking at these two together, the common factor is b sine squared phi. So we factor that out. We're left with our common uh, our result of cosine squared plus sine squared. So together, these two are simply b times the sine squared of phi. And then if we combine this with this one, factor out b, the remainder is our identity of 1, so everything resolves down to simply b. And, of course, we have to apply the negative sign, and that's going to be a negative b in this position right here. And there you have it. That's the result for the torus. Okay, we're done, but let me just quickly go back through them again, just so you can put them in the fact sheet. Here's the result we got for the cylindrical surface. And then this is the result for the spherical surface. And finally, this result for the torus. And there you have it, and we're done. We'll see you next time.